Dr. Joseph Maroon is an American neurosurgeon, author, and triathlon athlete. He is the professor and vice chairman of the Department of Neurological Surgery at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center and has been the team neuroscientist for the Pittsburgh Steelers since 1980. After starting to compete in triathlons in his 40s, he has completed more than 70 Olympic distance events, including eight international Ironmans. His most recent was in August 2022, at the age of 82, where he finished first in his age group. And with that, let me start the interview. Hello, Dr. Maroon. You are Professor and Vice Chairman of the Department of Neurological Surgery at the University of Pittsburgh. So welcome to Modern Healthspan, and thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure, Richard. So Dr. Maroon, you've been practicing medicine for many years and also have a very impressive resume of endurance events that you have completed, including uh, eight Ironman triathlons, which is, as I said, really impressive. But you came to exercise quite late in life, uh, I believe. So I would like to look at your secrets for health span from your medical knowledge and your personal experience. And if we could start with exercise and so why is exercise so important and kind of how did it help you yeah well i you know it uh nothing unique with me richard exercise in terms of the the mind body connection is really what it's all about and uh you know in terms of you know what does exercise do i it saved my life in a way mm. a big way actually mm. Uh, quite a few years ago, I, I went through a, a midlife crisis in which I was a very successful neurosurgeon uh, in my 40s uh, with all of the amulets of success, titles, papers, research, financial rewards. But uh, my world collapsed because I was very one-sided focus on my work only. I unfortunately... Uh, neglected my family. Uh, the, the spirituality aspect had atrophied, and I also had gained 15, 20 pounds in my pursuit of success. And uh, within the course of a week, my father died of a massive heart attack at age 60. Uh, my wife left with our two kids, and uh, uh, I had to quit nurse surgery. So for a year, I, my, my father bequeathed to my mother a dilapidated, terrible truck stop in West Virginia, Wheeling, West Virginia. And for a year, I literally flipped hamburgers and filled up 18 wheelers uh, working in a truck stop to help my mother with a, a big mortgage and, and try to stay out of debt, out of more debt. And I was pathologically, literally pathologically depressed, uh, not working, not doing nurse surgery. And, and one day the banker who held the truck stop mortgage called me and said, Joe, you know, we, we need to go for a run. You, you need to get out. I said, run, I can't walk up a flight of steps without being short of breath. So we went down to the high school track and I made it around four times and I said, never again. I was out winded, my legs hurt, but that night, Something strange happened. It was the first night I slept in about three or four months. So I went back the next day myself and I did a mile and a quarter, then a mile and a half, and then two, and then three. <laughs> and then I, I was like Forrest Gump running through Wheeling, West Virginia. They say, there he goes. But what was happening, Richard, is I was resetting my neurotransmitters naturally. My serotonin levels went up without pills. My acetylcholine made my mind sharper. The endocannabinoid system and the dopamine made me feel better. And as the unintended side effect, I began to lose weight. My VO2 max improved. And uh, eventually the mind, you know, the mind, as you know, can make the body very sick. Mm. But the corollary is also true. The body can heal the mind. So that running around the track literally healed my mind. 
And that's when I started cross training. I learned to swim. I got a bike and I entered my first 10 man triathlon, 300 meter swim, a 10 K run and a 10 mile bike. And I was like Roger Bannister breaking the four minute mile when I finished that. So that's, that's, you know, when you talk about exercise, it's the mind body connection and, uh, uh, the physical things that happens to the heart, to the bones, the joints, the muscles, all of these things get enhanced in a very positive way with exercise. Long, long winded answer, but, uh, I think it puts puts things in perspective. Yes, and it's good to focus on the uh, the positive uh, brain parts, so the positive mind uh, effects, as well as the uh, health. So, how how long did it take for you to get to that first uh, triathlon, triathlon, the Tin Man? Did you know, like how many how many years or <laughs> about seven months, eight months? That's, well, uh, that's I, was, really- I, I I can't tell you what horrible shape I was in both mentally and physically. What kind of difficult, what were the, what difficulties did you face going through it? Did you ever think, you know, maybe I shouldn't do this? Well, you know, it, it, it was a natural evolution from, again, resetting my, my neurotransmitter so that I felt good again. I had a, a sense of body worth, uh, and my mind, I, I was able to get back into neurosurgery in a healthy way. I had much more respect for mental health problems, for anxiety, for depression that is absolutely epidemic in our society now. And I, I was able to have more empathy, I would say, for my patients. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it was nothing but positive in terms of the results of of aerobic activity as well as resistance exercises. Can I ask what, what kind of what exercises do you do now? I mean, you're you're still active doing triathlons, uh, Olympic distance races, actually. Yeah. So what? Uh, so so can you share what kind of exercise do you do now? I mean, like long distance, like zone two, hit. Yeah, I obviously, uh, you know, everything, life is about balance. And in Mm -hmm. fact, I wrote a book entitled Square One, A Simple Mm -hmm. Guide to a Balanced Life, uh, to attain balance, homeostasis uh, in in everything we do. Mm -hmm. Aristotle said, seek the mean between extremes, neither too much nor too little. And clearly, as we age, I like to say mature, uh we're more susceptible to injuries mm. so one has to be very cautious about uh overdoing it listening mm. to one's body you know how much is too much yeah uh, in the past uh training for an ironman distance race you know i was i was doing 20 22 hours a week of biking swimming or running at a pretty high intensity you know now i'm 83 years old mm-hmm. uh I, I still run, bike and swim, but it's in moderation. It's, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, listening to how I feel, uh, and, and, uh, really not trying to be a marathon man at this point again, uh, and, and keeping it simple and safe, but getting my aerobic activity, my heart rate up, my VO2 max up and, uh, and, stimulating the muscles with both resistance exercises, flexibility, training, and aerobic activity. So what, what kind of resistance training do you do? I, can I ask? I, I do uh, weights and machines. There's a local club that I go to, uh, you know, two to three times a week, a week, I'll, I'll do a circuit of, of uh, upper body, lower body machines. Again, nothing excessive, maybe mm-hmm. 30, 45 minutes at a time, a couple times a week. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then I, I'll, I'll elliptical, treadmill, Stairmaster, bike, uh, get all those in. And, uh, and then when I can, I don't like to swim. I really, <laughs> I don't like to. 
get in the water, <laughs> particularly in the winter in Pittsburgh. Right. Um, and uh, but but I I still maintain that as well. Excellent. So you, you you said you improved your VO2 max. Can I ask how do you measure your VO2 max? Do, do you do it in the lab or do you use a device? Actually, I did it in a lab uh, right. quite frequently, and I, I I'm still working with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I've been the right. team neurosurgeon for them for forty years. Can you mm -hmm. believe it? <laughs> and uh, so I they they have a lab and and also. A year and a half ago, I, I went to the Aviv, A-V-I-V Center. Uh, it's a hyperbaric oxygen center in Florida, in the villages in Florida. And I literally, I, I underwent 60 dives uh, of hyperbaric oxygen therapy over the course of three months. And before doing that, I I didn't I, I didn't want to finish three months and say, gee, I feel better or I don't feel better. I wanted objective measures. So I measured my VO2 max, my anaerobic threshold. I had an MRI of my brain, a spec scan of my brain measuring blood flow. Uh, I did neurocognitive testing, an hour and a half of neurocognitive testing, which is a little scary at my age, you know, wondering what you're going to miss. And and fine. And uh, I did it before. And I also did a triathlon before and after 60 dives. And I actually published the the results in a, a journal, peer reviewed journal, uh, Progress in uh, Frontiers in Neurology. Frontiers in Neurology. And it's entitled The Difference Between Zero and One. Uh, you know, uh, William Sweet was a neurosurgeon at Harvard many years ago, well, in the 1980s, 70s, 80s, early 90s. And, and he said, uh, one case well studied and documented uh, is more valuable than 100 cases that are poorly documented uh, and studied. So I, I studied my one case well, and I titled the article, The Difference Between Zero and One. And I showed that there was an enhancement in, in, in all of the factors and including, uh, I, I did a treadmill test and post, I, I dropped my time by, by 10%. And that's exactly in the post triathlon, I increased my, my time by 10, by 9.5%. So it really correlated with what I did on a treadmill. But anyway, it's, uh, uh, it, it, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, I believe, does have a place. It increases mitochondrial biogenesis, new mitochondria. Mm. And as you know, mitochondria produce ATP, energy for the body. So whatever we can do with our mitochondria to protect them or enhance them is going to enhance our physical performance. So what was the... Um... The hyperbaric regimen. Do you know what the pressure was and, and how long yeah. were you in for each time? It, it was a, a two hour session, the atmosphere, two atmospheres of pressure, 100 percent oxygen and uh, five air breaks. Uh, which right. gets into the physiology of hypoxia inducible factor uh, and increase, which is a a transcription factor that increases stem cell formation. Uh, results in anti-inflammatory action and also new blood vessel growth by making vascular endothelial growth factor. So it's uh, a very, the only place like it in the country is in the villages in Florida. There's one in Tel Aviv and, uh, uh, and one in Dubai. Very sophisticated, high, high uh, medically oriented pro program. Right. I think I saw a paper about that before where it, it increased telomere length. That they... yeah, they've shown that the, the scientists, the, the main scientist is a Dr. Efrati from Tel Aviv and Amir Hadani. Uh, and they've published several papers on the use of this post-traumatic brain injury, mm -hmm. post-stroke, 
post COVID and also in healthy middle-aged athletes to enhance mitochondrial biogenesis and performance uh, in athletics. Very sophisticated. They're, they're revolutionizing, I think, uh, the use of hyperbaric oxygen for those particular entities. Right. And yeah, it may help with something like Alzheimer's or uh, other, I, I guess, co cognitive issues. Yes, they've actually published a paper showing that there was a reduction in beta amyloid plaque in the brain uh, in a small series of patients and also in an animal study. So just going back to exercise very briefly. So exercise helps with, you talked about serotonin and these other chemicals, but it also helps with uh, neurogen neurogenesis. That's it. Neurogenesis. Yeah. So it helps build um, new uh, neurons and um, helps keep the brain healthy. I mean, is that correct? And, and how does it do that? Yeah. Well, you know, I mentioned <clears throat> uh, about growth factors, vascular mm -hmm. endothelial growth factor uh, and uh, hypoxia inducible factor. Well, there's another growth factor that is produced in the brain with exercise called brain derived neurotropic factor, BDNF. Mm -hmm. And when one exercises, you produce more BDNF. BDNF mm -hmm. does three things that you mentioned. Number one, neuronogenesis. You literally make new neurons particularly in the temporal lobes of the brain where memory is subserved. Number two, it enhances synaptogenesis. The synapses are the connections of neurons. We have, we have 86 to 90 billion neurons in our brain, billion. Each of those may have several thousand connections. So we have 100 trillion synaptic connections. So BDNF enhances synaptogenesis, the formation of new synapses or the connection between the neurons. And thirdly, it enhances neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is that ability, kind of like you and I are doing right now, to take a huge amount of information that's stored in our brains in the synaptic connections and then discuss it in a somewhat coherent fashion uh, for your audience. That's neuroplasticity. So all three of those things are enhanced by aerobic activity in the making or the creation, the production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. 